to demonstrate pointers, we are going to code a stack. And we're going to do it a little different. Obviously, we've shown you how to use a vector. And a, a vector allows you to add and remove things automatically. What we're going to do is we're going to implement this with a linked list. Let me show you the difference. So when we had the vector, um, what that was is so here we have a list of values. And every single value in our list is, wow, this is really weird whiteboard. That's supposed to go all the way across, but it's not letting me. Ah, made it. All right, so every single value in our vector is sequential in memory. So if position zero is, is in one spot in memory, position one would be right next to it, and two would be right next to it, three would be right next to it. So as we're adding things, so we can put a three there, we're going to add a three, we're going to add a two. And you notice there was a push back function, um, and it was a little bit more difficult to insert in the middle. We had to use that begin and count up three spaces in order to insert in the middle. And the reason why is because since this is sequential in memory, if we want to add, insert something at the front or someplace in the middle, uh, seven, two, or or after we've already exceeded the limit of our size, what we have to do is make a copy of this data. There's my copy. I'm going to do this a little differently. Since, and I'm going to copy all those values over. Three, two, seven, one. And then suppose I wanted to insert at the beginning. Then I could resize my array to whatever size I'm doing and add my new value, 21 and then copy all my values in here. So now three would go here, and two would go here, and seven would go here. And, and so you see how it would, it's a little bit more, mm, how to say, a little bit more, a little less efficient than other ways of doing it. Let me show you how a linked list works. A linked list works by, instead of having position values in the list, we simply have what's called a node. A node is a little different than an array position because a node has two parts. It has whatever data you're being you're storing, but then it has a pointer to wherever the next node is in memory and they're not ever right next to each other. Maybe they might be next to each other. So now suppose we add like a, a 12. So I'm going to put my little 12 there and then this one will point to the next item in the list. So I'm going add another one in right there. I'm going to add a two in or something. I don't know. Okay, let's pretend this is the end of our list. So this would just point to, wow, that was weird. Why did I do that? Ah, this will just point to null pointer, meaning it's not pointing anywhere. The advantage is, now if I want to add in another item, instead of copying everything over or pushing everything back in my list, all I have to do is create another node. I'm going to populate the data with whatever I'm inserting. Mm, that's a good number. 42. I haven't used that one in a while. Okay. Now I'm going to go to where I want to insert it. Suppose I want to insert it between the 7 and the 12. And I can just erase this pointer here and make it point to here and make this pointer point to there. So that is the super advantage of using a linked list. And the easiest way to, to implement a linked list is with a stack and a queue. So those are the two assignments today. I'm going to go through a stack with you. A stack is, is a LIFO structure. stands for last in, first, out. And you guys on for the assignment are going to code a Q. A Q is FIFO or first in, first out. And what a stack means is, let's go new whiteboard. We're going to create some sort of cafeteria tray uh, stack of trays. So if we add something into our stack, whatever we add to our stack gets put on the bottom. Then if we add something, we have a pointer that's going to keep track of the top of our stack. Right? And so if we have one value in, this value happens to be the top. Then as they add another value, put another value here, and 
all we have to do is take our new value, point it to the top of the stack in our linked list fashion, and then take the top of our stack and point it to our new node. So really we're just dealing with a couple of pointers. We're pointing next pointers and wherever the top of the stack is. Whenever you remove from a stack, you're always removing the top amount. So all we'll do to remove is take our top pointer and make it point to the next one down and then delete this one. Okay, right. so let's code this. All right, I'm gonna start with our stack.h class and we're gonna need a couple of items. Remember how I just said that each of the items that we store information are called nodes? We're gonna use a struct to represent the node. All right, and we said the struct, the node, has two pieces of data. It has whatever data you're being stored. In our case, we're just gonna store strings this time. Um, string data. And then it also stores a pointer to the next node. Now here's where it gets tricky. If I want a pointer to an int, I would say int star, that this is gonna be a, to the next node, so I'm gonna do that. We don't want a pointer to an int. We want a pointer to another node. So I'm gonna put node there. And now our cute little struct is done. It's just, uh, it's got our data, just our two little parts. Okay, our methods, we're going to have our constructor. We are going to be using our destructor this time. Let's, let's comment these so we remember what they are. Uh, our, our constructor is just going to create an empty stack. Our destructor, we haven't used this yet, but that just it's going to deallocate the memory. Since we're going to be using the new operator, we're going to have to delete things. So it's going to delete the object. A couple things we're going to need. We're going to need to be able to push values onto the stack. Usually when it's a stack, they call it push to add to the stack. And all we're going to be doing is a void method that pushes on some new information. Or we could call it data since that's what I called it up there. Um, we're going to do a pop. Pop's just going to remove the top value from our stack. So let's say void pop. That's it. Um, we want to be able to see what the top value is without removing it. See the top value. I'm just going to call that uh, it's going to return back the text that's on the top. So I'm going to say string top, or peak is usually what they call that one. Then I might need to see if my stack is um, has any values in it. So I'll do a is empty function to uh, determines if the stack is empty. Or I should say instead of determines, um, returns true if the stack is empty. So that would be a boolean value. There you go. Okay, now just so we can see all the information in our stack, I am going to do a friend operator to overloaded the uh, the lesson lesson side so we can view what our stack looks like. And to review, because you know I always like to review uh, previous stuff so it doesn't go out of your head. Okay, that's what all the methods that we're going to code in our stack. Private variables are going to be fairly simple. All we need is we specified, I'm going to show you over here, bring this back. All we need is a pointer to the top of the stack. There we go. The top of the stack is a node, so I need a pointer to a node. So I'm going to say node star, maybe I'll call it top since it's the top of my stack. Okay, uh, this page is done. Um, catch us in the next video and we will code all of the methods for this class.